There shall be no man left till the earth to till the earth and to sow it. Like go the down trees, to the go down to the thirty seventh verse. Yes, sir. Verse thirty seven. Behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack. And are not slack, as when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son within two or three hours of her birth. Great pains can pass her womb, which pains when the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. Even so shall the plagues, even shall, so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon earth, and the world shall mourn, and sorrow shall come upon it on every side. Come on. O oh, my people, hear my word. And then you know and the they, most the most high is beseeching the people. He's talking about us. The blacks, Hispanics, the North American Indians, the indigenous people, the Jamaicans, the brothers and sisters in, 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 in Europe, the brothers, and, the brothers and sisters in Africa that are spread throughout the earth, the Philippines, Cambodia, our brothers and sisters scattered in Japan and all throughout the earth. He's, he's mentioning our brothers and sisters in South America. In Mexico, in Venezuela, Brazil. He's saying change your ways. It says, oh my people, hear my word. Come back to your book. Stand in protection with my word. And that's application. That's beginning to, to walk in the word of God. That's the hedge. Oh, my people, hear my word. That's the Bible. Read. Be ready to the battle, and in those evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth. Be as pilgrims upon the earth. Be ready to walk away from your homes if need be. Who knows? You may lose them. You may not lose them. You may be able to sell them. Live in someplace else. Or you may lose it all together and not be able to recoup anything, but still have the life of you and your children. A pilgrim is bold. A pilgrim is willing to walk away without expecting anything in total trust of the Almighty that the angels will guide their paths. Folks, I know what it is to walk away from everything and not have nothing. Into a foreign countries and all that. I know what it is. And that developed a lack, a lack of faith that cannot be quantified. Okay. I know what it is. And I'm glad I, I experienced that. Because I realized that walking away, you're not losing anything. You're gaining everything. It's faith. It's trust in the Almighty. Be like pilgrims in that, those days. Be willing to walk away and never look back. Be willing to do that. What good is to stay, into a, a stay, in, stay in a house that will become your tomb? Read it again. Number 40. O oh, my people, hear my word, make you ready to the battle, and in those evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth. Verse 41. He that selleth, let him be as he that fleeth away, and he that buyeth as one that will lose. He that occupieth merchandise as he that hath no profit by it, and he that buildeth as he that shall not dwell therein. He that soweth as if he should not reap, so also he that planteth the vineyard, as he that shall not gather the grapes. They that marry, as they that shall not, that shall get no children, and they that marry not, as the widowers. And therefore they that labor, labor in vain. For strangers shall reap their fruits, and spoil their goods, overthrow their houses, and take their children captives, for in captivity, and famine shall they get children. Hold that real quick. And I want to mention this also, folks. 
Corporate memos have went out throughout the United States and other Western countries that, that, that stating, for those people who refuse to take the COVID test, they should no longer be able to, they should no longer have employment. Now, we already figured this out because the experts have come on and said that there's an 85 to 95 percent chance of what they call a negative positive or positive negative <laughs> where they don't know what it is, but they can tell you it's positive. 85 to 95 percent, which means they can dictate and tell you at any time. Any person that took a test have COVID. It depends on whether where these people stand politically and whether or not they agree with this, whether or not the government or those that are over that corporate scenario, over the corporate scenario, whether or not they deem you a threat to the system will determine on whether or not they say you positive or negative. That means if you are a person that ne never believed anything and you were saying things and all that, they'll automatically make you a positive to do what? To make you an example to the rest of the herd. They just did this. I'm checking out things with the Tennessee Titans and all that. How the Tennessee governor came out and just said, well, listen, you don't have, no longer have to wear a mask and all this because, you know, everything is fine in the state. So they had to make an example and say, well, OK, since you're going to come out and say these things, we're going to say that the Tennessee Titans all have COVID-19 and we're going to stop games until you comply in your state. <laughs> so it's used as a corporate hammer for those who don't toe the company line. You think that's a coincidence? One week, the governor say you don't longer have to wear a mask. And then a week later, ah, oh, we have eight or nine or ten people from the Tennessee Titans have come down with COVID. Because they can at any time make someone a positive if they took the test. It's a po political tool. It, it's being used as a political tool of control. And now the memo then went out to the jobs and say, well, listen. Which we'll is throw them in with the rest of their people and make them poor. No test, no job. So what are you going to do? Well, the Bible says be like pilgrims in that day. Don't worry about it, what you may lose and all that. Because they're going to implode everything anyway. This thing is going coming down anyway. So don't compromise yourself in your family, in your lives, your soul. For, for what we know will only end up, end, up, end up being a temporal fix. Where are you, other lawyer? Verse number 46. Uh, Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 46. For strangers shall reap their fruits and spoil their goods, overthrow their houses, and take their children captives, for in captivity and famine shall they get children. And they that occupy their merchandise with robbery, the more they deck their cities, their houses, their possessions, and their own persons, the more will they be angry with them for their sin, saith the Lord. Like as a whore envieth a right, honest, and virtuous woman, so shall righteousness hate iniquity when she decketh herself and shall accuse her to her face when he cometh that shall defend him that diligently searcheth out every sin upon earth. And therefore be ye not like thereunto, nor to the works thereof. For yet a little and iniquity shall be taken away, or it shall be taken away out of the earth, and righteousness shall reign among you. Yeah. Let not the sinner say that he have not sinned. Now, here's but the point. It's tying in to our actions now. Because don't forget, we read a few verses up that the Most High is allowing this for amendment. What? Chastisement and judgment against the wicked. And he allowing the evildoers to do it. 
See? So how do we survive the end of the world? By putting down sin. Read it again. You see how he tied up the earth events and all that and went right back to our personal actions? And guess what? That's on each individual. No one else is responsible for your actions. That's what's so deep about this. Every individual have the right to do right. You can't put that on no, no one else of what, for why you're not doing right according to the Almighty. Getting yourself together. Getting your home together. Falling into your original role and purpose according to God. Following the law, statutes, and commandments. And getting your house together, your children together. You can't make no excuses to what, for why you're not doing what's right. Outside of you. That's why the Most High is saying, well, okay, do you want to make it? Do you really want to make it? Read that again, that last piece, Elder Lawyer. Ezra chapter 16, verse number 53. Come on. Let not the sinner say that he have not sinned. Let not the sinner say that he have not sinned. Read. God shall burn coals of fire upon his head, which saith before the Lord God and his glory, I have not sinned. And the Most High is going to put heaps of coals on your heads for the person who says, I have not sinned. No. Nah. You have to go to the Almighty, all of us, and say, you know what? I've done wrong. And I'm going to do right going forward. For you, most for you, Ahia. I'm gonna do what's right in the name of Christ. I'm doing right going forward. Protect me. Hedge me. When I pray, I'm not just gonna pray for me. I'm gonna pray for my children to remind myself that I'm responsible for them, being kingdom children or demon children. Every time I pray for them, I understand there's a responsibility that I'm hedging them with my prayer, but a responsibility for me to fix my broken children being irresponsible at younger ages, not realizing that they were looking at me. And, and, and now I, I, I've created, you know, Tasmanian devils on earth. No. We have, we have to begin to fix our wrong. And that's, that's an individual. It has nothing to do with anyone else. Let's read it. Read that last piece. Yes, sir. Verse 53. Let not the sinner say that he have not sinned, for God shall burn coals of fire upon his head, which saith before the Lord God and his glory, I have not sinned. Every man have sinned and comes short of the glory of the Almighty. So the Most High is saying, the amendment is here. The famine is here. The armies is here. The destruction is here. Repent. Get it right. Everything broken will be broken asunder. Everything not fixed will be beat to powder. Man, woman, and children. You can't expect the Most High to come in and fix it. Judgment is here. You have to fix it so that what? So that the death angel passes over your house. That's how it works. You have to fix it. Finish reading. Verse 54. Behold... The Lord knoweth all the works of men, their imaginations, their thoughts, and their hearts, which spake but the word, let the earth be made, and it was made, let the heaven be made, and it was created. And his word were the stars made, and he knoweth the number of them. He searcheth the deep and the treasure thereof. This is he our God. This is the God I'm going into tomorrow. He know the exact numbers of stars in heaven. Okay. Every, every one of them are his, are his child. These are the, the children of the Almighty. When you see how the Most High decked the heavens with light, they're his children. 
He know every one of them personally. See? Read. Verse number 57. He searcheth the deep and the treasure thereof. He hath measured the sea and what, is, what it containeth. Come on. He hath shut. Yes, sir. Verse 58. He hath shut the sea in the midst of the waters, and with his word have he hanged the earth upon the waters. And he have hanged the earth upon the waters. I'm going into that tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> when he separated the waters from the waters and had earth suspended in heaven. This sphere suspended in heaven. That was made for a judgment. Okay. That was made for a judgment. Read. Denied. He spreadeth out the heavens like a vault upon the waters, hath he founded it. In the desert he hath made springs of water and pools upon the tops of mountains, that the floods might pour down from the high rocks to the water or to water the earth. Now and I'm going into this because we're in the earth right now, and which with the artificial scarcity will make people believe that there is no water or clean water. When the Bible tells us where the clean water will be at the end. The area that would have the clean water with clean fish. And also in the midst of wherever the Most High has us. Springs of water will spring up to preserve us. The same way in the wilderness when Moses hit that rock and water gush up from the rocks. Folks, the earth is suspended in water. There's enough water. And the Most High will sustain us with that. But first, we must be filled with the living water. With the spiritual water, the living water, the understanding. He will preserve us. But, the, but are you going to be driven through fear or faith? That's the question. We were in the wilderness outside of all of this and our God sustained us upon the exodus. When we, needed, when we needed food, it rained manna. When we needed water, water came gushing from a rock. Water is everywhere. But the question, and you need to ask your question today. Are you driven by fear? Answer this within yourself. Are you driven by fear or faith? Because the same God who said these famines would come also promised Promise had made a made an oath and a promise of those who love him and keep his commandments that he'll preserve us alive with the resources, the resources in his earth. But it depends on whether or not you'll have access to it or will have access to it. And what that depends on is whether or not you're driven by fear or faith. 